right before the wall hits, he turns it off. It's there right in his video, you can tell. He definitely should have not kept that editing. He did not notice that in the editing because that rainbow road right there just shows you that he turned it off right as the impact was about to happen. With Elon Musk and Doge investigating all the shenanigans that American taxpayers have been funding for the last few decades, it's been all the rage in America to hate on Tesla, Elon Musk's car company. In fact, it's one of the most talked about subjects in the country today. And if you're smart enough, you can cash in on any big trend or controversy. And that's what Mark Rober did. You see, he's one of the most successful YouTubers in history with, at the time of recording this video, has 65.5 million subscribers. His videos routinely gets 20 plus million views, some even over 100 million views. And if you didn't already know this, if you're getting those kinds of views, you're making millions of dollars from your videos. To be fair, all of his videos are pretty safe and not political at all. Quite family friendly and even educational, I dare say. Well, that all changed when Mark decided to throw his hat into the current culture war that we're waging here in America. You see, he made a video basically trashing Teslas and showing them as dangerous autonomous vehicles. I'm especially affected by this because I own a Tesla Model 3 with full self-driving in it. And my family and I absolutely love it. I have it drive myself and my family all the time. And in my experience, I would say that it drives better than myself around 90% of the time. The only times I take over from self-driving is when I have to park the car. No, let's rephrase that. More like look for a parking spot to park because when I actually find the parking spot, all I have to do is press a button and the car parks it for me. So let's see if I've been putting my family in danger by using full self-driving. Let's go ahead and check out this video. You're tuning into the 9 tenths podcast where possession is 9 tenths of the law. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me with what I do here. I'm in my Tesla on autopilot going 40 miles an hour towards a fake Wiley Coyote Roadrunner painted wall. Please stop. Please stop. Holy and I'm doing this to see if Tesla's autopilot can be tricked because it famously only relies on simple cameras to navigate the world as opposed to much more expensive tech. Okay, so we're starting out with a car with the LiDAR. First test is just kids standing in the road. Not sure why he's doing that. It's very unsafe, so we want to be extra careful. Okay, hit it. The testing speed was 40 miles an hour. Should have put my seatbelt on. <laughs> which meant the LiDAR would have to detect the kid and then slam on the brakes at least 60 feet in front of it. And it turned out that's all it needed. <laughs> now it was Tesla's turn. This is a terrible feeling driving straight at a kid, but this is for science. All right, we are up to speed. And with just simple cameras, the Tesla was speeding fast. Oh no. But did detect the kid. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Just not in time to fully hit the brakes. Oh no, he was even a Crunchlands fan. <laughs> now if you're a Tesla owner, there is a silver lining because we were relying on the automatic emergency braking system to stop for the car. And because it assumes the driver's paying full attention while fully driving the car, it only hits the brakes when it's 100% sure there's a problem in order to avoid false positives. So the alternative is to use autopilot. And that assumes the driver isn't paying much attention. And while the downside is you get way more fancy and breaking and false positives. Okay, so that first test was definitely misleading because he didn't say that the car wasn't driving itself. He was relying on the automatic braking system, which means that he was actually driving. The car wasn't driving itself and he had his foot on the accelerator and his hands on the steering wheel. He had full control of the car and he just waited for the car to brake itself, which it did, but it didn't do it in time. So it's kind of misleading there. He didn't say that they weren't using autopilot. He just went through with it, making you assume that he's using autopilot, but he was in full control of that vehicle, just waiting for the brakes automatically turn on. Pilot, it actually stopped in time. So I decided to be nice and call the score one to one, and then I'd be even nicer by using the more conservative autopilot on the Tesla for all the remaining tests. So yeah, when he did use autopilot, guess what? It worked. Such as this one, where we would now simulate the kid dashing out from behind a parked car using some clever engineering, giving the cars less than a second to identify the mannequin and stop themselves. Here we go, getting up to speed. Oh, a ball came out. I wonder why that happened. Oh, kid! <laughs> oh, 
but another lime save. Now it was the Tesla's turn on autopilot. 40 miles an hour, there goes the ball. And impressively, it stopped with plenty of room to spare. Good job, Tesla. Which meant we were all tied up heading into round three, the fog round. Optically, with my own eyes, I can no longer see that there's a kid through this fog. The LiDAR has no issue. This will be interesting. Okay, here we go. Oh, wall of fog. We plunge through the fog, coming to a very sudden break. Hey! After which we saw the mannequin was not only still standing, but it was casting a really cool long shadow because the lasers don't pass through solid objects, just like how you can cast a long shadow with the sun because light doesn't pass through solid objects. I don't have high hopes here, but would the kid look just as cool after the Tesla test? Oh, 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 fudge! Oh! <laughs> I mean, Tomo does make everything look sort of cool, but that wasn't the only shot. I actually hit the brakes there. That was on autopilot? The cameras didn't even hit the brakes at all. Second of all, yes, you're not using full self-driving. You're only using autopilot. Autopilot only works on highways and freeways. So if your kid is playing out in the highway, I'm sorry to say, but autopilot might hit your kid. Probably you shouldn't be letting your kid play out in the freeway. And second of all, I don't know when the last time you drove and then you just saw a wall of fog like that. That doesn't ever happen to me. Well, usually when I drive through a fog, it's gradual. It starts off pretty clear and then slowly but surely the fog builds up. And guess what happens when you're driving your full self-driving car through the fog? Once it starts to build up, the car tells you, hey, I can't see, you better take over. And it starts beeping at you rather annoyingly. So I don't know what the real world application of this test is. I guess if there was ever uh, circumstances where your kid is playing in the freeway in the middle of a wall of fog that just appears out of nowhere, complete zero visibility like a wall like that. I guess if your kid was in that situation, I guess they would be pretty messed up. The only thing still on is the pants. That was a bad one. And now that LiDAR had taken another W. Time to make it right. The next test will see if the cars could spot the kid under a torrential downpour made up of maybe too much water. This is really interesting. See, the Tesla can see the kid, but as soon as it starts raining, the kid is gone. And it was similar in the LiDAR car, where you first got a clear image of the kid and the shadow. Once we started the hose, oh, you see all the water going in. LiDAR might- Again, for that special circumstance where you're driving, it's completely dry, and you see just a wall of rain, torrential downpour of rain in front of you, just so hard that it looks like a wall of water you can't see through it. That just happens all the time when it rains, right? It's completely dry over here, and then there's like a wall of rain. That's just completely normal, right? And then your kid's in that wall of rain, just playing in the middle of the street, and he's using autopilot. So that means it's in the freeway. The kid is playing in a wall of rain in the freeway. So if your kid is ever in that situation, I guess they're F-U-C-K-E-D. Struggle here. Okay, here we go. And as the wall of water started, LiDAR seemed to not slow down at all oh boy. <laughs> until the last possible second another w now i just need the rain to stop you know any good rain dances Back up. Oh, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> now, the LiDAR had surprised me. It was time to see if Tesla could as well. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and sadly, it did not. Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen because you can't see through the water. I mean, the cameras can't see through the water. But again, in real life, it would be a gradual increase of lessening visibility and the car would not notice that and it will beep at you to take over incessantly before that even happens. So like I said, if your kid was uh, stuck in a torrential downpour, like a wall that's completely separating dry from rain and he's stuck behind the rain side and there's a car on autopilot, not full self-driving, autopilot, he's on the freeway, your kid's playing in the freeway, he's F-U-C-K-E-D. So here's the moment of truth where he drives the Tesla at 40 miles an hour into the fake wall. And so I steeled myself and accelerated the Tesla up to the 40 miles an hour. And as the wall crept closer and closer without moving an inch, Holy crap. the question was if the Tesla would detect 
just in time to step on the brakes. And it turned out... Holy me! <laughs> So I can definitively say for the first time in the history of the world, Tesla's optical camera system would absolutely smash through a fake wall without even a slight tap on the brakes. He was already driving before turning it on. He turned autopilot on just a few hundred feet away. So that's the first point right there. So it's on right now. You can see the Rainbow Road graphic on the screen. So he does go through it. Let's see what happens right here. Right there. Moment of impact. No Rainbow Road. Look at that. No Rainbow Rainbow Road. That means right at the moment of impact, he turned it off. Moment of impact, no Rainbow Road. Autopilot was not on. So he was driving toward the wall. Autopilot wasn't on. He turns it on maybe less than 100 feet before he hits the wall. And right before the wall hits, he turns it off. It's there right in his video. You can tell. He definitely should have not kept that editing. He did not notice that in the editing because that Rainbow Road right there just shows you that he turned it off right as the impact was about to happen. So what do you guys think? Is this video a true real life test of self-driving Teslas? First of all, I'd like to say with what I saw, it's definitely misleading to say the least. In the video, he never once used full self-driving, only autopilot, which is not the most advanced autonomous feature that Teslas have. But he didn't mention that in the whole video. So if you didn't know that little difference there, you'd be assuming that he's testing the actual full self-driving the most advanced feature available in Tesla, which is not the case it is not the most advanced autonomous feature in tesla but second of all i don't know about you but i feel none of those tests were real world tests especially the fake road wall thing i mean does that ever did you ever encounter that in your life do we really have to look out for these fake walls especially fake walls in the freeway with kids playing behind them because if that's a real danger then we're all F-U-C-K-E-D. And also, as you can clearly see in the video, he's manipulating autopilot on and off so that test would fail. He turned autopilot only a few hundred feet before he hits the wall. And then right before he hits the wall, he actually turns it off and you can see it in the video. So in my opinion, Tesla has enough ammo from this video to sue his ass for defamation or fraud. So how do you guys feel about Mark's test? Is it a valid test for the real world with all the fake road walls out there? Or are we witnessing greed ruin one of the best YouTubers out there? Because at the time of making this video, his video's already gotten 13 million views and it's rising. Thank you guys for tuning into the 9 tenths podcast where possession is 9 tenths of the law. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out with what I do here. Peace.